Hello, and welcome to another episode of Wheel of Horror, the podcast where two best friends discuss a horror movie that's decided by an evil wheel. Today, we're talking about The Silence of the Lambs, which was released in 1991 and was directed by Jonathan Demme. I'm Alec. And I'm Eric. And with us as well is Dom Berger, a very spooky guest. Hi, Dom. Thanks for joining. (laughs) Happy to be here, boys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Uh, We've known Dominic for, like, 25 years probably right yeah way too long i remember alec and i went to <laughs> first long. grade together and alec had these big thick glasses he was real cool oh yeah oh yeah big big <laughs> i should still wear glasses because i can barely see it in my red eye but don's from avon so we he's a uh, goes way back just the same kind of lifestyle that eric and i had growing up which is which is a cool boring one but you know a fun one it's, yeah there's things to do yeah i'm sure there is movies when you're in seventh grade yeah, we all grew up watching movies together, and uh, I'm pretty pumped to talk about this one, guys. Yeah, man. Uh, so why don't you start us off, Dom? Like, what do you think about Silence of the Lambs? You said this is one of your favorite movies. Have favorite the lambs stop screaming, Dom? <laughs> I couldn't quite silence them. I, I was telling you this off mic, but yesterday I lost power five minutes into watching this movie. And, I, you know, I've seen it before, but uh, Maggie doesn't like scary movies. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to watch it off my data plan. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. And, like... <laughs> literally 30 minutes in and i look up and maggie's sitting next to me and i was like okay it's got to be pretty good if she's deciding to and uh, i'll tell you you know what's the scariest part of this entire movie the looks that jodie foster gets from every guy in this movie it's i don't i've never noticed it before but every room she walks into it's not just you're a girl but there's savage eyes like <laughs> yeah it's sexual harassment city in the workplace and it's also every time that shot happens it's a POV from her eyes, but then when it switches, it's what they're seeing. You know what I mean? Never yeah. been more uncomfortable. It does such a good job of making you feel like probably what a woman feels like a lot of places a lot of the time. Just she's shorter than everybody. Remember in like the elevator, she's so tiny when that. Yeah. Door and yeah, it just it really does feel like she's just intimidated, even though she's a police officer. She's definitely still in a intimidating place. Eric, what do you think of the music, man? Because I love Howard Shore. Yeah, Howard Shore, those low horns. Oh, love it. I would say underrated, but this this movie won five Oscars. Um, (laughs) Yeah, no, but you don't hear that theme. Like, you know, if you're like thinking of horror movies, you don't hear that one. But that one's like it's slower. You know, it's not as scary, but it's very, very, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the few horror movies to be to win, obviously, Best Picture. But it won more Academy Awards than like any other movie, right? Five, it's five Oscars, and it, it won like the main ones, like Best Picture, Best Actor, Best you know, Best Actress in a Leading Role, Best all that, all the like top ones. The uh, the build they have leading to Hannibal Lecter, right? Like the way that she's walking through those hallways, and he's telling her the stories, right? The psychiatrist as he's handing her pictures that we don't get to see, mm-hmm. right? And we're going through the main hallway, and it's all of these guys on each side, and they're disgusting. And then the, the contrast, whoever does the set design for that movie, like the contrast between him and like the rest of the cells is like you all of a sudden, like you have all this expectation of what he's going to look like, what his cell is going to look like. And it completely tosses you on your head. Also, the cell itself is not a bars. It's glass or plexiglass or some. It's not bars, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you think, um, did you guys notice when, right, because they keep saying, to her, like, don't get close to him, don't get close to the glass, and then you notice as he's like, closer, please, closer, and then she walks, and then there's that one quick, like, beam, almost like shadow that, sh- that like, flashes in front of her right as she gets close, and you're like, oh, man, it's like she just stepped into his world almost. Did you guys notice that? I did not. Dude, The fr- I'm telling you, right in the beginning when she's like, closer, closer, please, like, with the badge, she steps closer, and all of a sudden, this, like, this just shadow goes right across her face and then it goes right back into the light and you're just like oh shit like so she, no. she just crossed kin too close to the glass um <laughs> yeah i i like the relationship it's so good like character development where they respect each other and she's endearing and you know at the beginning of the movie when jack crawford says all right you're gonna go interview uh dr hannibal lecter and she goes hannibal the cannibal she never says that again once meeting him she always refers to him as dr lecter which is a like a respectful way to talk to him you know she doesn't call him a cannibal she's like hey dr lecter you know how you know how you know can you answer this question politely asking and there's that you know there's a love that kind of builds there's something to like i I don't know if you feel like this alec but like 
now that you know how acting works, right? And like you see the choices that Anthony Hopkins makes with the lines that he's given, right? And I'm not sure how much of it's due to direction or the fact that that guy is just the best of the best, but like the way he delivers those lines, like the way he plays with her accent, the way he's like, and it's shot beautifully, but like just the choices he makes with the pitches that he uses, like I cannot, I'm so captivated. I've seen that movie maybe four times and I, I literally couldn't be more attentive. There, there is quite some, uh, quite a bit of uh, improv in it where he does do the southern accent. That's a, that's a thing where that was natural. He wasn't gonna do the southern draw like the West Virginia, like all the way to the FBI, like that. Like some of that scared um, Jodie Foster. Like she wasn't expecting. That. Yeah, I heard that too. Uh, you know, and he did it to like piss her off, and she <laughs> got a very natural reaction out of it, and like. That just shows how incredible like that guy is. He just ups everybody. Yeah, you're right. You notice like every little facial thing, like he barely blinks, like the way that he never moves his like forehead. It's just everything is calculated. And it's one of those things where you're like, you like him. It's almost like you like him, but you know he's a monster. And it's so he's so oddly charismatic, but not I don't even know. He's like a weird psychologist that you're he, afraid he's, of. He's like, messed like, up because it's like he has a he has a he has his own set of rules and his own morale yeah and he know for a fact he could live a much easier life but he makes his life a lot harder because of his his code she even says that she's like maybe hold up a mirror to yourself and he kind of like looks at her just like fuck you the whole time they're playing like this mental chess game with each other like every mm -hmm. line you're just like ooh, there's sub there's subtext to everything they're saying yeah i mean he could play along though with like a lot of people like you know and he doesn't have a to have them give him such a hard time and take his drawings away and and put the tv out and and he could talk to the senator better but he chooses not to he doesn't give a shit he does not give a shit he, mm. he put me in the worst cell i have a code that i live by and that's uh i don't care dude you know what my one of my favorite parts is you know you see him be very reptilian you see him kind of acting the same way throughout all this stuff and then when she starts to describe buffalo bill and he like what they found in that girl's throat and you mm. see him get so excited because he's already was, figured it out. And he he's like, knows. yeah. And he got that look and he's like, was it a butterfly? Like he, he was so excited and he doesn't get that excited. Like in the rest, whenever else he's talking to her. So it's a cool shift. Mm. Well, it's, it's, a, it's just so coincidental too that Miss Moffat dated Buffalo Bill and the Miss Moffat was one of his patients. So he could put the, the dots together quickly. If, if Miss Moffat or whatever, that person's head that she found in that yeah. storage if she didn't date buffalo bill would Hannibal Lecter still solve the case probably though he's that smart yeah and it feels like a fairy tale like they include that in the movie like that's how that's one of the clues that leads starling to it but like i don't know there's something about this movie that like and you're right like the cell right so his different changes in cells like it's still more captivating that the imagery they go um, like, you know, they do a lot of effort to get those beautiful shots and nothing's really filmed like that anymore. With shadows, like, like real, sh real yeah, work shadows. Time. And like the way that they bring the shot in, it's like a nice little swoop. No mm. one would take that long. They would have to cut it nowadays. It had to be cut, 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 you know? You're captivated by the performances, though. I think that, like, even if it may not be the most interesting shots and they may be long and stuff like that, you're so engaged with what they're saying and the way that he's acting. And that scene in the cell where uh, it's so dark and then, like, he's just back there and um, and then the lights come on. He's like, thank you, Bonnie. Like, that's just a creepy image, just him in the dark. kind Because of, he can't see. And then, oh, yeah, and then the thing slams. And you're like, how the hell did that happen? Mm. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, like, creepy stuff in the cell. Yeah, and subtly, like I love when they're they're talking about Miggs, and it's like, what happened to him? And he's like, yeah, I heard him whispering, and like Miggs swallowed his own tongue. And I was like, that is just that's such a great line. I love that line. What did he tell him in the cell? <laughs> he's like Miggs, you stupid son of a bitch. And he's just like, <laughs> it's like shut up. Yeah, I want to know what he told him. And that line too, where he's just like, that's something Miggs would have said. He's like something, or no, that's something Miggs would say. And he's like something Miggs would have said. You're like, that's like. No, no, he he, goes, he does not anymore. Oh, right. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you're just like that's a little little childish sort of jab sort of thing. I don't know. He's a he's a sick fuck. Yeah, I like his use of uh, anagrams too. Like yeah. Miss Hester Moffat was an anagram for you take the you you mix up the letters. It's Miss the rest of me. Yeah. Now he's he's a fucking evil, brilliant genius. I mean, he really is.
Lewis yeah. friend, iron sulfide. It's like, oh shit. How do they figure that out? Like, how the hell could anyone figure that out? Yeah. I don't know. It's that's why it's so good. Like Buffalo Bill as a choice for the villain, like the whole time he's so weird. You know, most horror films they they go straight for mass. Like they like these killers are like all the same. And him, he's so weird. It freaks you out. You're like, like it's a movie trying to punk me. Like wh- this is the guy that everyone is eluding everybody. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, Clarice is 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 kind of like his kind because it starts off with the movie with uh, Jack Crawford asking her like, "What do you think?" profile buffalo bill and she nails it you know she's like age you know probably 35 has to be athletic because he can carry these big women and she like nails it that's who the the end villain is you know do you guys think that buffalo bill so this whole thing is just he's he thinks he's gay but like he has to become a woman in order to to fulfill that so that's why i mean obviously you know that's why he's trying to get women's skin and stuff there's a lot of thing going things going on with buffalo bill but he doesn't. Yeah, you're right, Dominic. Well, no, he kind of does look like um, Jeff Dahmer, kind of. Oh, Jeffrey Dahmer. He sort of does. He just looks like a weird, awkward guy. But then, then you see him alone, and he's playing "Dancing Horses" or whatever, or "Goodbye Horses." Yeah, yeah. ruin yeah. that song. Poor Lazarus. <laughs> oh, they're probably like, fuck. Why do we? Why do we give him the rights to this song? Dude, like, that song completely ruined. But also, this isn't that. This is the kind of movie that, like, for 20 years, you could reference it, and immediately everybody knew. And that's pretty rare. I mean, that's not something like that you nail all the time. But this movie, I mean, you have Dumb and Dumber, South Park references this. I mean, how many movies have said, like, hello, Clarice? Oh, everything. Know, everything. everything. Yeah, it definitely, like, I love watching Anthony Hopkins make choices, man. It, like, Westworld, I was watching, they, like, they did, like, a breakdown of just one of his scenes. And, like, the amount of choices he makes in a given moment, not even the line, but, like, like everything he does with his face is purposeful and like you can see that control in this movie. Yeah, that's why the queen decided to knight him. Because he's so <laughs> I always love that they're like the knights used to be the knights of the round table they protected like the entire island and it's like and now they're really good actors and stuff. Do you like know that. do you know who the first choice for Hannibal Lecter is? Did anyone read up on that? Who they asked to play the role but he thought it was too violent? No. Please say Marlon Brando. No. <laughs> um Sean Connery. What? Oh. Sean Connery, but they also wanted Gene Hackman to play Jack Crawford, and Jack and Gene Hackman turned it down. Totally different movie, right there. Hello, yeah. Clarice. <laughs> I was allowed to stop screaming. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> that would be so bad. I'll, I'll uh, be honest, though. Um, I've been an old friend for dinner. I was gonna say, um, I I got to watch Maggie watch it for the first time, and you know that monologue where she's telling the lamb story. And I'm thinking, oh, like this is literally the titular story. Like they're gonna like go through it, and she's gonna. It's like gonna be great to watch her. And at the very end of the story, she go like she's like, and he was just so heavy, and so very cold. And Maggie mm-hmm. goes, that was a terrible story. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, like heartless. <laughs> That's like all she took from it. She's just yeah, like. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. It is. You want to know what's going to happen too. Uh, Hannibal Lecter just keeps like grilling her on. He's like, then what? What happened? Like sort of thing. And she's just like, fine, fine. But yeah, he he just jumps right to sodomy and all this stuff. You're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pump the brakes here, brother. Yeah, he, he goes like, all the questions are so like, so pointed. And you're like, what does he know that we don't know? Like, what's she t- going to tell him? And you're like, that entire scene, like I'm on the edge of my seat. And Maggie's like, I don't really like that story. I was like, it's what the whole movie is named after. Just watch. (laughs) Yes. That's what I love about this movie, too, is that tiny little thing is the entire title. Like, that's so it really doesn't have much to do with the movie, but it's just. Oh, yeah, it does. It's about the relationship, I guess. But it's just the title. So clever. I don't know. I think it's. Well, think of the lambs that are getting slaughtered. That's Buffalo Bill's victims. And she has one lamb that she saves. She stopped. She silenced the screaming of the lambs by saving the last victim. Okay. Okay. No, you're you. That's a that's valid. Yeah, that makes sense. Buffalo Bill. When he when he throws the cards up and runs away, it's like it was so like you know how like movies try to like make bad guy look like really slick and whatever, and like you're like oh she's got him, and he he just runs away. It's like almost comedic in like the way that he does it. It's and then all of a sudden he brings you down into the basement, and the tone completely shifts. Well, the music in the background, too, you're just kind of like, God, and you just immediately hear her screaming, and you're like, this is so... And, and, and Clarice knows no backup is coming, too. That's what makes it even scarier. 
Yeah, no she one, knows they're in like a different state or something. Yeah. How good is that shot where you think they're about to bash and he's like, oh, I'm coming, like sort of thing. And he goes, yeah. Through, and you think it's going to be her, uh, the, the whole SWAT team. I love that. And it's Dude. just her. Like, it's yeah. literally just her. And you're like, oh. and she doesn't have time to run and call the police. So she's just like running after, trying to keep prisoner like calm, being like, like, listen, no one else is coming. You're going to be fine. I need you to stop screaming because I got to find this fucker. If if you if I if I don't find him, you're still gonna be in this hole. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is. Like it's like it's either she saves the day or her body's gone, Clarice's, and that she's still gonna get murdered because those other cops in the plane and shit cut out before she said she could where she was going in in her day. Yeah, hundred percent. That's really scary. <laughs> yeah, no, it really is, and I don't think it like it hits the audience. I feel like right when it hits Clarice too, that's like oh shit, like no, I there's no one coming either. Like there's no chance I gotta solve this right now. What do you guys think though? I know that Hannibal Lecter kind of mentions that he's like Jack Crawford. I bet he fantasizes about like having sex with you. I feel like the relationship isn't like that. I think he really is taking on like a role model, fatherly. Dude, I would have said yes, but then that last shot, the way that he shook her hand was a little bit weird. And I don't know, the actor they got to play him looks like he has his own personal bug collection. So it it might just be that the dude looks a little creepy. He looks like Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> Anyone even knows that president? Yeah, I don't know. Eric, what do you think? Do you think that it was like a sex, he was trying to just bang her the whole time? Or he genuinely was like, no, she's actually like really, her father was a police officer. He died when she was younger. He wants, she really wants this and she's really good. I think Jack Crawford really good, and that was just uh, Hannibal playing games because he romanticizes about Clarice. I think you're right about that too. Yeah, mm. because he always he says that line to people will say we're in love. Yeah, I love that. And also, and also the best. I mean, my one of my favorite parts in the movie is at the start of the movie, Clarice is getting the rundown, like stay the fuck away from the glass. One guy got real close to him. He chewed his, and she sh- shows the picture Donna you talked about, like that we don't get to see, but then. We notice, like, oh, damn, yeah, he's he's a monster. He, finally, he's in. He has bars, you know. And Clarice gets really close to him, and he doesn't hurt her. He just touches her, and that's probably the only time he's ever done that <laughs> while in captivity, you know. Or touched a woman, or no, just been nice. The physical contact that was nice, uh, <laughs> you know. He's probably only any time he's had the ability to ever get near somebody, he's chewed their face off. Yeah, I mean, well, he went into captivity 10 years ago, and that is probably the first woman that he's not biting off. Yeah, you're right, her tongue. A person, and I mean, too. Like, And he loves Clarice. Like, he, He's starting to build a relationship with her. Alec, what's your favorite part? Because I know, Eric, we've gone through ours. I mean, I really do like that when it's like the, the switch at the end, when the SWAT team, I think that, that is so cool and so well done. And you're like, oh, they're going to get him. And then all of a sudden it's her. I really like that. I mean... I, love, I really like the scene where he with Princess and that whole thing. Just, the the yeah. Yeah. The basket. I like it for a couple of reasons. I like it because it's been spoofed so many times and all I think about is like Cartman now basically. Like, <laughs> like it also I, I think it's really, really fucking creepy because they're even talking about when the senators on the TV being like Catherine, Catherine keeps repeating the name and they're like, Oh, she's trying to make her human, but then he just keeps calling it or Catherine it. And yeah. he puts a lotion on his skin, and you're just like, oh, so he's he's just so fucking gone. What, what do you think about the uh, level of detail for when they're examining the body or talking about another body? They talk about missing fingernails and dirt under the fingernails as if yeah. she was trying to claw out. Mm-hmm. And then we see the light going up the, the well hole, and you see the nails in the, in the brick wall. Yeah. And she starts freaking out like someone else was here yeah. and clearly didn't make it out. Her screaming makes that oh, so intense. Yeah. It's so slow too. Just like when he's in the back of the ambulance, and like you, like the the build to that moment had been so long, and the way that he sits up in the back, he doesn't move quickly at all. Like it doesn't cut to him jumping. It literally he takes his time. He peels away that face, and you're like, oh no, <laughs> it's ugh, ugh, it's so brutal, and just the close ups of the skin getting like put in the sewing machine and stuff and you're just like this guy is so fucked up yeah that that was another scene that scared the shit out of me when when clarice goes to that like last house before she goes to um the killer's house bill for bill's house and she sees the dress with like the the, the masking tape on it yeah. with the, the diamonds oh dude that's so fucking scary to think about so weird <sighs> yeah that's haunting stuff right there it's just it's such a fucked up movie but it's so memorable and 
I wish I was alive in 1991 to see this in theaters. You were. Wow. You were, though. <laughs> my you parents could have seen it in theaters, dude, if you didn't theater. draw you. I wish, yeah, my parents are like, why, why? He appreciates good art. I don't know why my parents are. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I wanted to walk out of that theater just being like, wow. Like, when the credits roll and you know that, like, the door is wide open now that Hannibal Lecter's escaped. So, like, what's going to happen next? And the movie was so good itself. And they still wrapped it up, but there's also more. And you're like, I want to walk out of the theater and be like, what did you think of that? Jesus Christ, that was good, right? Right? Like, I want that. I don't know. What uh, What age did you see this at? I'll be honest. I didn't see this until probably college. Like, oh, I was 12 or 13. Yeah, I was really young. I was, yeah, I was probably around, like, 12 or 11, yeah. Like, I, like, honestly, it's not, you know, I had Maggie watching it. It's not like a horror movie, you know? It's just, like, a brilliant mystery you know it's like a very cool it's just like the way that they really let everything build in it like there's no rapid jump scares it's like it's, it's a, a very cohesive story it's a psychological like, thriller yeah i think that, that and that yeah. changes right like with the with the sequel like they lose that kind of feel that grounding hannibal hannibal yeah we could we could save that for another podcast I, yeah i know i know that sequel was not as good and not nearly and definitely was criticized more for a lot of reasons obviously jodie foster didn't come back because she was just annoyed by the amount of drafts that she got of scripts and she says i'm out which much. movie are you talking about are you talking about hannibal or um, red dragon H hannibal the, oh, the okay. sequel so yeah red dragon's a prequel right yeah red dragon's a prequel have you dom because i mean you, you really love this one have you seen uh, all the other ones I have. Um, I haven't seen Red Dragon in a while. I can't mm. really remember. That one's really not that great. I, I don't think it was memorable, but I, I did see, you know. I've seen I did Hannibal see... Rising, too. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I didn't even finish Hannibal Rising. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> what about the TV show? Have you, have you guys seen that? Nope. I started, didn't watch that. Started watching it. It's actually not bad. It's got very network TV gimmicks to it, but like the guy playing Hannibal is phenomenal yeah my mom actually said it was she really liked it too it's on like nbc or something right mm. it's yeah. also on netflix do you guys know about this though there's actually a like a prequel to to this before called manhunter you guys know about that one no i don't No. so manhunter was actually there's another actor that played um hannibal lecter and it takes place before this it was shot before this and it was i think it was the first book before this one and it's uh yeah i mean it didn't do very well but then they just kind of like we're like okay well we'll do his second book and we'll just kind of recast everybody and then obviously it was a huge success but yeah that's a it's a prequel to this i've never seen it but i'm kind of interested i don't know was it a uh, an american's prequel or did some was it french or something no i mean it's it came out in 1986 it's uh, it was directed by a guy named michael mann and it's i guess sort of like a loosely red dragon e but like different hmm. I don't know, but it is technically, if you're going to watch these movies in order, that would actually be the first one you should watch. But no one ever talks about it, so it's not great. So, let's say you're in the situation of Catherine. Let's say that you are locked down there and you've got some crazy, disgusting guy listening to, like, late 80s uh, music and dropping um, lotion down on you. What do you guys do? Parkour. Just get the fuck out of that well. Find a fucking way to get out of that well. I'll, I'll ruin my hands to get out of that well. I could get out, though. I could get out. Dude, I would probably, uh, I mean, I would definitely try to get out, but if when I didn't make it out, because I would not make it out, I'd be down there in the fetal position eating my own poop. Like, I would not, <laughs> I would not have done well. As soon as he throws that hose in, I would just fucking yank him. Because the hose ain't going to break. The rope on the bucket's going to break. I'll yank him in and bash his skull against that hole in the well. We'll both die out down there together. Okay, okay. He's coming in with me, and so is that damn Precious. Precious will be fine, though. We'll be friends. <laughs> I was thinking, why don't you, uh, why don't you do a psychological torture on him? Start mocking him and stuff. He's just like, you put the lotion. You be like, you put the lotion on the skin, and you like start doing that back to him. And wonder, I wonder if that would like mess him up. And he'd be like, stop it, and you just like really screw with him because he's got like a weird lisp sort of thing. So if you start poking at him, maybe he would go nuts. Because what does he got a hose? He's not gonna kill you. He needs you. He has a gun. He shoots his victims. That's after they're skinny, though. Yeah, but if you piss him off enough, he's gonna don't he's gonna shoot you. Do you think he'd want to kill you before he could get you skinny? So what if you start doing it like you know after a day, you're like fuck this guy, I can't get out of here. <laughs> like it's it, on his list, I don't know. It's like Joe Dirt, like he's like, all right, I'm putting the lotion on the skin. He broke in record. <laughs> he's a waste. I forgot about that. You got my magazines. He like drops some auto traders. Like all right, I'll lotion up good. Just give me my auto trader. 
It's like, oh shit, a hammy? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I heard. <laughs> Yeah, really good. Also, I, I noticed this, Eric, and, you know, we watched the Poltergeist yesterday. It's the exact same title sequence. Exact same, like, uh, the Top type or font. The font is, like, identical to Poltergeist. And, like, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like an outline, like, type. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, ah. I mean, it's only probably because we watched Poltergeist literally the day before, but I was like, that's li- that's literally the exact same opening credit, but... uh. Mm-hmm. I, I know now it's kind of corny, but like, I got to give credit. The first time I saw this movie and he had that last line where he's like, I'm having an old friend for dinner. I was like, what? Ooh. <laughs> Eric, you used to say stuff like that all the time. Don't bother with a trace. I won't be on long enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, okay. Uh, all right. I, I like it though. That it ends on a, like a courtesy promise, like a gentleman's rule. Like, hey, don't come after me. You know me, I kill people, I won't come after you. But don't come after me. They have like a mutual, like, come on. Such a great line where it's like, the world's more interesting with you in it, Clarice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like they introduced that earlier with um, Jodie Foster's like, you know, he won't come after me because like, I, I can't explain it. He would consider that rude. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but she, she doesn't give him the promise back. She says, you know, I can't promise that. Like, I'm going to come after you. So... I, I almost like I don't want you guys to remind me of it, but like I kind of want to watch Hannibal now because I don't remember what happened. I remember Jodie Foster's in it, but I'm curious. Like I want to know what happened. It's just so later, you know. It's just so later than it. And it, I wanted like a sequel to come out sooner. It's so different from the first one that I I almost want it to be different cast. You know, like I like they. I don't it know, is, man. It's just a it's different kind more. of movie. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I'll check it out. I gotta. Eh, I'll check it out. This is such a good movie that I don't even know. I mean, you can just leave it alone, I guess. But yeah. They could have, but uh, there was money to be made, Eric. It's just <laughs> there always is. All right, well, uh, what do you say you spin the wheel, Eric? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Are you excited, yeah. Tom? Nice. Are you excited for the wheel, Dom? I, like I am. I am. I'm feeling skinny, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> All right, spinning. Oh, good one. Nightmare on Elm Street, Alec. That's a, that's that's the holy trinity of slashers we're finishing up. This. Oh. <laughs> Damn. All right, Dom. Well, thank you so much, man. Hey guys, thanks for having me. I had a great time. Dude, first guest. So so nice to have you. Kind of makes me the best. You are. You're the best. <laughs> you're the me or my first. <laughs> so gonna get these First is the worst. Second is the best. <laughs> Someone's second on this. I'm sure we'll hear that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks, guys. <laughs>